Hey everybody, Jordan here with Fantastic Microbes and where to find them. So normally we go out on adventures and stuff with the microscope, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to start a new mini-series on this channel where we explore and learn from other microscopists around the world. Basically, I'll be interviewing different people that either use a microscope for work or for a hobby or that specialize in something having to do with the microscopic world. In today's episode, we're going to be meeting Jenna Pochi, who is an award-winning microscope photographer. I've been following her stuff on Instagram for a couple of years now, and her photography is really spectacular. Needless to say, I really wanted to figure out how she gets such amazing and colorful shots. Not only did I learn a lot of really cool photography skills, but we also talked about a bunch of other things as well. That said, this video is a little bit longer than the other ones, so I do have timestamps in the description below, and then there's also going to be a bunch of references in the description for things that we're going to be talking about. Also, just a heads up, there are a couple of editing errors in here, and I apologize for that in advance. Um, I was recording this through Zoom, and on my computer it was showing, like, us full screen on one side and then the share screen thing on the other side, but for some reason when recording through Zoom it only kept, like, the share screen as, like, the huge portion. So I've definitely got a lot to learn as far as video editing goes, so please forgive me, and uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce Jenna. I'm Jenna Pochi. I'm actually a research assistant at a nonprofit environmental lab. I work specifically in the aquatic biology section. So we culture um, water fleas and algae and we use them for uh, bioassays. So we're doing ecotoxicology testing. To talk about how you yes. got to microscopy for a second. I actually genuinely avoided microbiology my entire undergraduate, and I have two undergraduate degrees. So like this was significant amount That's, of time yeah. of avoiding. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got this new job and you know, they said, we, we want to train you in wastewater microbial characterization. Um, so I was taught how to identify and characterize like flock settling, um, filaments bacteria and then I was like whoa what are all these other things here right like yeah yeah someone was teaching us and I was like what are rotifers what are verticella uh -huh. and you know like in a class you can ask questions and it's like yeah like these things are seen in normal water too it's just like you know once you contextualize once you specialize you can then make qualitative mm -hmm. data collection and you know like try to diagnose or troubleshoot things yeah um, I think that I think like the biggest misconception that people see is like or, or that people have is like microbiology is all about you know tiny little bacteria and all of those things you know but there's like protists and like microscopic animals yes. and stuff and and all that kind of gets glossed over a lot you know and for like even in you know, classes like, yeah yeah even even in college classes and and it kind of like boggles my mind because like they do have like an ecological significance you know like they are yes. important you know they're based and base they're indicators of different or... environmental parameters I mean yeah yeah for sure you see a different ratio of ciliates to rotifers or you know like if I see a certain bacteria I always know that there's a high sulfur content whether that means mm -hmm. something died in the sample or if we're just like yeah. is this a mud silt sample and things are just it's organic matter breaking down you know like these are little things yeah. you can make even if you have no context for your sample yeah awesome. i immediately bought my own microscope uh -huh. without knowing much and i just kind of dove in and yeah shout out to jam and germs he mm -hmm. i literally started and he was like one of the first accounts i followed yeah and yeah. i messaged him you know like and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I was uh, like, you know, like I'm looking these things up. Do you have any advice? And he shared a lot of ID references and stuff with me. And like, I was just like, oh, the community is so like kind, genuinely yeah. kind. Everyone I talk to is just like, nobody's ever been rude, right? Um, yeah. It was very opening. And I was like, you know, I really wish all of science was like this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, on my account, I do try to like really encourage community interaction. Like I said, I run multiple chats. I have a Discord channel that nobody uses, but um, mm -hmm. maybe we can get it up and running. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a shared, you know, ID reference drive that I manage on my account, and it's people yeah. all over the world contribute to it. Yeah, can we I can host... we talk about this for a second? Yes. Um, okay, so I'm gonna so, so I've got this pulled Share up. It. 
And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen real quick. Okay. So this is a shared folder among microscopists online in order to help each other use references for help with ID. This has all sorts of guides. I mean, um, Jenna, do, do you want to ex explain some highlights as to what's in here? Sure. Um, so after I had started that chat group, you know, we were consulting each other for identifications and mm -hmm. even just like talking to people who know what they're talking about, it is still sometimes hard to ID stuff, especially even if you don't have a photo, mm -hmm. like maybe you saw it and you know what you're looking for. Um, so I said, Hey, like, let, let's do this. <laughs> like, let's bring yeah. all the sources together. Let's um, do the mind. Here's my well. Google drive. Yeah, all our, so, all our brains, all our best resources together. Yes, completely. And this we had is, originally had a live. If you see that question for Pawn Life Zero Four, we should probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, like microbio ID links. There was a little uh -huh. word. Yeah, yeah. So we actually did uh, Pawn Life Zero Dot Zero Four. Um, his name is Luigi. Uh -huh. Luigi is very. Um, you know, he is. I consider him like co-captain of our little community engagement um okay he was the first one who was like let's all do this mm -hmm. he's amazing but anyways so then like we have that microbio id links you yeah know, we're all like what websites do you use if you only use the internet and so yeah. there's a lot of for the algae because algae is so specific and difficult mm -hmm. um protozoa and metazoa i think you know, once you know your geographical area, you can really narrow it down. Whereas mm. for algae, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> it never ends. Yeah. So I originally just uploaded mine and then I shared it and I said, you know, hey guys, like this is everything I use. Everyone has open access to this. Everyone has editing rights. As long as you have the link, you can add to it and, you know, we can all share what we do. And you know, it's grown a lot since then. Shout out to uh, Uriel Ruiz. Mm -hmm. He just changed his handle micro guru, I think, on um, Instagram. But he he also contributed a lot. Also, Elizabeth Beston, she recently only um, joined our group. But like, I noticed that she uploaded a lot of documents as well. So there's cool. ID on algae. Um, there's even an algae culturing book if you want to try to do that at home. Yeah. And this is great. Um, and I will say too, like if you're new to the microscopy world, um, there, there's a couple of places that we'll go ahead and send you guys to in the description. I wanna hear about your trials and errors with, with your photo stuff. And yeah. so I'm gonna share the screen. Um, and what I'm gonna do is like, I'll just- Slideshow. Just kind of do a little slideshow and, um, like you can just talk, you know, for a little bit. If you want to talk about each, each one, or like if you want to stop on a certain one, um, like I really like this one. This is kind of one yeah. Of let's just do it this way. About. This is easy. Um, and then I want to talk about this guy as well. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you you can pick some of your favorites too. We we don't have to just pick my favorite. Yeah, slideshow is totally cool. And this this crazy thing too. Do you know what it is? No, I don't. I was trying to guess. And I, I mean, is it some sort of crystal thing or is it some part no. of a living organism? It's part of a living organism. Okay. Is it like the back of a shell of a beetle or something? It's a fish scale I found on the beach. Shut up. Oh, that and is it's so just polarized. Cool. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, I God. saw it and it was like clear. Um, I was in a salt marsh actually. It wasn't the beach, but okay. whatever. I'm salty about that. I thought my brother was taking me to the beach and he took me to a marsh where I could had to wear oh, shoes yeah. anyways. Uh, but I saw Thanks. this, I saw where a bird was, had taken apart a fish and I saw all the scales. And I was like, those are really clear. And I'm like, there's gotta be something cool about these. Yeah. Like, cause so, clear so stuff looks cool under polarized light. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Hmm, but you had no idea. I'm gonna take these home. So you and had no idea though what you were going to see. No, not at all. Okay. And this one just happened to be my favorite. There were a few other images. Um, uh -huh. But this one reminds me of like ocean waves crashing on the beach. Uh -huh. uh, so that's why I named it Sunset because of the color scheme as well as it. I grew up on the beach. Um, I grew up in Florida. So for uh -huh. me, it was like, oh, when you're at the beach at sunset, really reminded me of that. That's awesome. 
yeah, yeah I'm, random fish scale <laughs> random fish scale who knew like that, that's the crazy thing about like polarized light um i mean like with any technique or anything under the microscope you never know what you're gonna get oh um, yeah yeah okay so so that photo was way crazy cool um can i uh talk can we talk about your like polarized how do you get your polarized photos like yeah i use cheap 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 filters okay which will be thrilling for people to know yeah okay here we go oh, i yeah, literally okay. went on amazon yeah i bought like a 10 pack of these it was maybe five us dollars and uh -huh. they're just completely tiny polarized light filters mm -hmm. that's, and i even that's have awesome. it for my new setup i like have a little tiny one cut for the phone setup oh, so i sweet. use these you should always honestly you should ask someone else for the physics of this because i'm not good at physics but I yeah. always place one like down right over the light source. And then okay. the other one is directly in front of the camera. Oh, interesting. So, okay. So but you so, always have to make sure that they are aligned. Right. Cause they're, they're like, cause there's two, there's a couple different kinds of polarization. Like there's like circular and linear and this is linear polarized. And so that's Correct. why, um, well, it's so cool. So that's, that's kind of the same method that, that I use. It's the cheap method. And, um, there are polarized microscopes out there. They are, they cost a pretty penny, um, but they do have <laughs> some really cool results. Um, it, it's interesting. I haven't tried it out by putting the, that, um, the lenses that close. What, what I've done is I just put one right underneath the slide and then the other one right on top of the slide. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, that would work and, too, as long as they're crossed. Yeah, yeah, as long as they're crossed. Um, and I mean, again, I don't know, physics or light Me bending or anything <laughs> but i'm pretty sure like once they're like once the light is bent it's it stays going stays in that bent. yeah it stays bent in that direction right so i think but so I, don't too. <laughs> I don't know so to you to you viewers whoever's trying it out do whatever method and i'm gonna try that new method that that, that you do well and, and here's the tip so yeah after you polarize you use things called retarders mm-hmm and this is how you manipulate your colors. Okay. And so this is literally packing tape folded on itself. I know a lot of people will tape these to like another slide and then just use that. Okay. Um, you know, you could buy mica or like some fancy filters from the internet. Um, I've honestly had the best luck with packing tape. Okay. And it's fun because you can move it around, you can fold it over itself and see what happens. You know, I personally am a big fan of the packing tape. What? Um, I, I've never heard about this before. No? No. And so that's how I get the specific colors. So Sorry, well, you, when you, I polarize, you, you, my yeah. polarization looks very much like dark field, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so once I add the retarder, and usually I add it over the bottom one, just okay. because it's easier to move it down there. Yeah. Um, but you know, you'll see the colors change and you can decide what color you want for yeah. it. Um, oh my gosh. I think it just bends the light another way and narrows the wavelength uh -huh. or something crazy like that. It's yeah. magic. Let's just say that. Yeah, um, that's that's just what it is. Well, it's magic I, physics. <laughs> well, I think your method of putting the filters, you know, in, in those far away places, it would make it easier to to use the packing tape and stuff definitely i also had asked a few people you know i was trying i was using i just i had read clear plastic of any kind specifically after i talked to lois she said any yeah. kind of plastic um and you know i tried it on the slide and everything and i just found i like packing tape the best <laughs> well cool oh man i'm excited i want to i want to like, do this now how exciting is that? It's like, this is less than 10 US dollars. I mean, if you yeah. already have the microscope, do it. Uh -huh. I saw, I saw in one of your pictures here, hold on, let me, let me share this. We'll go back. Let's, let's talk about vintage microscopes for a second. Yes, that's a Bosch and Lom, and it does still work. Really? Um, that is my nephew's microscope. I don't know if I uploaded a picture of him on it. There's a picture of him over yep, here. There, that's his microscope. Okay. And so that's you always cool. have to, yeah, you have to use the mirror for it. It's really scratched and like, yeah. you know, busted up, but it still works. And I just and, thought and it was a cool 
yeah like that's how it works piece. old school you know before they had you know small tiny electricity or leds or electricity even yeah so and then this next one over here is is this your current yes. one or your older one or this is my current one i did change um that gray piece out for a black piece it doesn't make yeah. a difference but it is that, a dice standard gfl it's from like the 40s and 50s do you want to talk about like for, for just a second like what are the pros and cons that you've had with this microscope versus your other microscope yeah i don't know do you have any from your experience i do have a lot of input um, some actually. microscope buying advice for people because because i only have an am scope that i've only had for like three four years but they're you know, still but, really good um, um but yeah so but you've got you know different brands different styles and things so yes i'll, I'll, no. I'll just let you take the floor yes because i'm very opinionated about this a lot of people are really snobby about buying, quote, a name brand microscope, whether it's a Zeiss, an Olympus, or what's the other one? I can't remember. But, um, you know, these yeah, cheap this, Chinese this microscopes, yeah, these cheap Chinese microscopes are not that bad. Mm -hmm. um, I did see a big difference in my glass quality once I moved to my Zeiss. But okay. you can get good photos if you know what you're doing. Like that is a thing. So first of all, I bought the Omax one because I didn't really know what I was doing, right? Yeah. I wanted a ready to go out of the box, let me get going microscope. And so yeah. I ordered this Omax brand new off of eBay. Um, it also came with a face con, like I got a whole kit thing. Okay. <laughs> it came with a case, had a face contrast kit. Um, it has a, a microscope camera. So that one is a trinocular head versus my right. binocular. Okay. And so, so, so this is, this is better. It shows the, the full. Correct. So that little knob at the top is that um, microscope camera. I actually miss my microscope camera like a lot and I didn't think I would. Really? So it actually hey, is very different work. Yeah. It's a very different workflow. Uh -huh. So on the microscope camera, you have to use the software with it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you adjust and edit your photos before you take your photos. Yeah. And then, whereas with this size, I'm having to do post-product, post-processing. Uh-huh. Um, and for me, it's, it's a difficult, it's a difficult transition. I do not like editing photos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I do really actually miss the microscope camera. Yeah. You know, another upgrade I would consider in the future is getting a trinocular head for this size uh -huh. and hooking up a DSLR or something similar that I can view on my computer, much like you see here. Um, yeah, so so I bought one of these cameras um, right when I was first starting off, and mm -hmm. I wasn't sure, like, I didn't know anything about what I was doing. Like, I, I got, like, one of the medium pixel ratios or whatever. Yeah, I think and, this one in here is a nine megapixel, because yeah. I saw once you go over a certain amount, it's not, it doesn't change anything. Doesn't really There's too much that. aberration. Yeah, um, but the thing that got me was that, like, it had like a really slow frame rate and I was trying to capture yes. live stuff. And so um, I, I think there is a place for these, but it wasn't for me because I was trying to capture a lot of live stuff. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know about you, but that's, that's why I found more success like with just an you know, iPhone or whatever smartphone because um, it has really good imaging software you know, with its regular camera. And, yeah so that's that's your debate right like what yeah. am i my what am i imaging am i doing live video am i doing video am i doing stills you know mm. a lot of other people i've spoken to you know they have a dslr some people yeah. don't even have it like attached to the microscope they just have it on a tripod lined up perfectly to get their images yeah some people have it connected i've seen so many people make makeshift you know iphone adapters or you can buy one like i purchased this one um, yeah i have a dslr i've never done like dslr photography uh -huh. but i am working on adapting this and changing this so that i can get much better quality stills um, yeah because i do print prints of my work and you know i've sold some of them and they've won awards and been in art shows and yeah yeah you know so I'm here for still images. You're here for video. 
Well, I mean, there's differing opinions. We can be we can be friends still. Like it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> of but course. Can we talk about this? And I want to talk about like your your setup with with these lights. And yes, stuff, sure. And the the image that that it produces and all that stuff. So so, I got butterflies from my brother. Mm -hmm. He worked in a butterfly like atrium thing. And so mm -hmm. if they die, as long as you froze them for a significant amount of time, there is like a regulation for this to prevent um, parasite transmission. Okay. So I have a lot of butterflies and that's just me because I'm lucky. <laughs> yeah. But you, I've done this with butterflies I found on the ground. So like if you keep an eye out, I've done it with other bugs too. I've done a cicada, a wasp. Yeah. I think there's like some Etsy places because I bought like a little like collection of butterfly. Yeah, wings. you could totally. Etsy. I mean, I always highly recommend try to make sure you're getting things ethically sourced. Ethically sourced. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but um, anyways, I, I will never get tired of Lepidoptera. So this is a clear glass wing butterfly, that specific butterfly. Uh -huh. um, and it actually was significantly different than other butterfly wings I looked at. So, I mean, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. texture is totally different didn't polarize the same way you know like it was different but anyways so that is how I take if you had a stereoscope you could also do this but I do I have a compound so okay. I have to make things work for me yeah so that <laughs> most so real stereoscopes quick, so will, will is this I, I want to go to this one in a second as well is, is, okay. this, is this the same or a different butterfly or a different this, butterfly okay um but was this also with a compound microscope correct Oh my gosh. Okay. That's blows my mind. Cause I was like, you can, you can only get like, you know, good stuff like that with a stereo microscope, you know? No, but no. You just need to open your mind. I just need to open uh, my mind. I will yeah. just say you're Let's... severely limited by your objectives. Yeah. So I, my previous microscope, you know, when I would do images like this, I only had 10 X and that was all I could use for it. My Zeiss right now does have a 25X okay. uh, or a, well, it's 2.5, uh, but it's 25 magnification where, and then a hundred magnification. Yeah. And I also do this for a lot of, um, I like photographing leaf surfaces, particularly because a lot of them refract light in special ways. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a jewel orchid collector. So they like, they have sparkly leaves and they're really cool to photograph. Um, well, that sounds fun. Yeah, I'm a big plant nerd. So like, I like taking pictures of my plants, even though they're micro when I get my yeah. pictures done. Yeah, I want Anyways. to know where you got this light okay. picture. Like, <laughs> That's actually not the light I normally use. And yeah. I was giving it just a trial run, but okay. did it, that did it light, work or did it not work? Because it, it, it looks like something that I feel like a lot of microscopists do. Like there's so many ways to jerry rig. Yeah. Like, uh, like, People don't like people just look at the photograph and they're like, oh man, this is beautiful. You know, and then then they zoom out and see like what it took to get that photograph. And yes. it's all this like, you know, janky yes. configuration <laughs> of stuff. Um, so this I was just trying out. Um, that's actually a grow light from Amazon. Oh. Because like my con my house is very dark. And so I had plants in that corner. You can kind of see an orchid inside uh -huh. a cloche right there. Um so that grow light was actually for that plant. I just happened to be doing the microscope. I was like, let's give this a shot. Yeah. Um, it was very washed out. The light, okay. it was nice though. That one, you could control dimness and stuff. Um, okay. The most underrated lighting and my favorite lighting technique is uh -huh. to just hold a flashlight by hand and get the lighting I want. I like dramatic lighting personally. Yeah. Um, and there are tips. A lot of people recommend putting tape over a flashlight. And you okay. can use that to diffuse your light if you want like more diffuse light. Um, I personally like the drama and yeah. I just hold it by my hand and then take all the pictures I need to yeah, take yeah. and then I do my thing. Well, um, it, the crazy thing, like photographing Lepidoptera or, or butterflies for you people that don't know, um, the, their scales are so cool because they reflect light in, in different ways. I don't know, I don't know if that's the case for all of them, but like it, in, in some of them, most of them, yeah, mo most of them. Um, so like if you're holding a light, I, um, I did a video on this. Um, I saw but, your blue morpho one, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was just holding my, my wife's phone, um, with, with yeah. that light and, but then I was trying to like take the picture with the other hand um so yeah it's it's really funny like if that clip is super helpful uh-huh um, or if you have another way yeah I always use one flashlight 
sometimes I also have the bottom light on, not uh -huh. always. I usually call that like trans lighting if I actually do describe things. Um, yeah. Which ones are like taken with a flashlight? I totally will. Yeah, yeah. So that 400X single scale. Okay, tell, tell me what row we're looking at. Oh, this one. First row, yes. Okay. That's taken with a flashlight. That is the clear glass wing butterfly. Okay. And as you can see, like I just caught that one scale. The others are there. They're just not refracting light. It's yeah. just the angle of that I was holding the flashlight at. So um, th this thing right here, is this is this the scale? That that's that's a single butterfly scale from a glass wing butterfly. Can you, can you see my mouse? Yeah. Okay, just just making sure. I, I wasn't sure. I haven't Make done sure Zoom meetings that. <laughs> since forever. So so this is well, that's really cool. Yeah, and it's a little different shape than most butterflies. Yeah, I was gonna say like most of the ones that I've seen are they don't have like this little V thing to it. Yeah, me either. I think That's I have cool. a um, Morpho wing somewhere in there yeah. that you could compare to if you want. Yeah, yeah so, like this one. So here's a blue so this Morpho. is taken on my new microscope. Okay. Actually, I think they both are, to be honest with you. Yes, but like here you can see how there's scales there, but they're just not refracting the light. That's why I wanted to include this picture. Yeah. Um, you can see not only how they change over the vein, and but they still mm -hmm. refract, but also like there's scales on top. They're just not reflecting, so. Yeah. Um, just I really like that picture, even though I hate my vignette. I got to fix that. Um. Yeah, those blue morpho wings are just so much fun. It's endless, endless hours. I've done it multiple mm -hmm. times and I never get bored. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another cool thing to point out is like if you're if you're looking at other insect wings, the thing that makes um, moths and butterflies different um, that gives them the name Lepidoptera, I think in Latin that actually means scaly wing. Um, mm -hmm. So if, if you're looking at moths or butterflies, this is the kind of cool uh, scaled wings that you're going to be looking at um otherwise with other insects like you'll, you'll be able to see the veins a lot more clearly and stuff um but i mean and butterflies and moths still have those but they're just kind of hidden you know underneath yeah uh, which you can see in that single scale how yeah it's still there you can see all the hairs and stuff they use yeah for yeah generations um yeah yeah no all that's why i was like that glass wing butterfly is very different <laughs> it's because it mm -hmm. it showed a lot more than i was expecting yeah, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a question. Do you, what sort of like, do you use any sort of editing software with any of your pictures, like, or any apps, or do you just like, um, like, uh, stuff that's taken on your phone, do you just shoot and that's it? And then your hands off? Yes, I shoot and that's usually it. Sometimes okay. I'll adjust things to increase contrast, so like lighting, yeah. but that's really it. I am not a fan of editing. Um, you know, my backgrounds are that clear. Like I work hard to get a background that clear. Yeah, so that's, so I, I, I want to talk about some of these water fleas for, for a second. Um, yes, and we can talk about photo stacking because that is how I got these images. Yeah, okay. Um, oh, do we want to talk about these? this and the other oh if you want to um well I just wanted to show them because they're really cool this is one taken with the flashlight and it is a photo stack I believe this was about 25 pictures stacked on top of each other okay. and so that is a big that is why it looks like a stereoscope is because yeah. it is like I have 25 different frames of view stacked into one photo to give you the 3d effect yeah so because if anybody so that is a software I do use Okay, because I was gonna say, if anyone's tried to do this, you know, like this is a very three-dimensional creature, you know, and with the um, with a microscope, you know, just like the the amount that's actually in focus is so thin um, that you just can't do it with one photo. So um, I just haven't talked about photo stacking on my channel yet. No, totally so, cool. Explain it. Yeah. So 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 basically, how photo stacking works is like you take you know, one photo and then you, you know, zoom in a little bit more and then you take another photo and you zoom in a little bit more, you take another photo. Um, that way there are all different focal points and then you essentially stitch or stack them all together. Um, there's some softwares or you can, you know, do it gruelingly like by hand. Um, but <laughs> some but, people uh, actually will take 
videos and if they have a high enough frame per second uh -huh. and they like the alignment's not too off yeah. I've heard people can stack it even that way which blows my mind my preferred software is helicon focus okay um which i will also make sure to include a link but there is this really cool <laughs> free pro it's an open source free program so you can't like make commercial images with it um but it, i do highly recommend it for people just starting out okay uh it's picole.day but anyways it's a german professor and he codes it for fun is what i've heard um like it's just a pet project for him to work on but it is open you just always have to reference his uh, website if you use the images for anything. Um, and it is just a good first experience to be like, is this something I feel like spending all my time doing? Because it does yeah. take a long time to take that many photos. Uh -huh. um, the stacking itself isn't what's intense. It's you collecting all those frames of view. So yeah. So so like we said, so this one was was how many? About 25? Probably photos. about you know, 25 to 30 photos. I was holding okay. a flashlight by hand the whole time for every single frame. Yeah. Um, um, okay. okay, so water fleas. Water fleas. Couple of questions. First of okay. all, how on earth do you get everything else so clear? Like, what's, what's the best tip? Get your clear background. Yeah. You gotta fish them out. I do not have tips on how to make this easier other than practice. I okay. do this all day, every day. So I rock at it. Just practice. You'll get better. Okay. Um, I think it took me like three months to be really quick. But anyways, you have your sample. You're uh -huh. going to just get your bug out. Put it in a new container if you need to. You can add more fresh water to this. I mean, mm -hmm. I would even just use tap because if you're doing a photo stack, you have to kill your bug. Um, I know it's really sad. I know it devastates everyone when they hear this. I, I already knew this, but I'm just, okay. I'm reacting yeah. to the audience here. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's sad. And that's why you got to decide if you're okay with that. It's there sad. There's a lot of ethics and things. It's and you've sad, but decide. it's science. So it's okay. It's science. And, and my bugs small. are lab bugs. So I, mine would have been killed anyways. Well, there you um, go. But if you do have some from the wild, yeah. well, we'll talk about that later. Um, anyways. Put it with, in some cleaner water, and then uh -huh. you just suck it back up. Single, okay, well, mine's not a single drop because this bug's really big. <laughs> Probably too big for this pipette. Well, and sometimes they try to swim up, you know? Yeah. I feel like they know what's going but on. But you can always get rid of that excess liquid. Look at that. Uh -huh. There we go. You got a bug on a slide, minimal other things in it. I would add alcohol to this to okay. kill my bug so I can stack it. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna put him back in his in his uh, container. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I should be specific. Most water fleas you find will be female. Oh, um, interesting. Because they're parthenogenic. They actually only do sexual reproduction mm -hmm. or even produce males really when they're stressed. Uh -huh. So heads up, all your water fleas are probably female. Interesting, okay. Now you know. The ones you find in the wild. Now you know. You said we were gonna, you, you wanted to talk about something about in the wild, or oh, was that what you were talking about? Um, I just wanna say, if you collect samples and you bring them home, if you're going to re-release your samples, re-release them in the same exact spot, or mm -hmm. you sh really should leach before dumping them anywhere else and killing right. them. You do not wanna spread invasive species. There's so little research done on invasive microbes mm -hmm. and it's really just not worth risking it. Yeah, I, I really like that you bring that up because I haven't brought this up yet in my channel and my channel is all about collecting microbes from yeah. you know, strange and bizarre places or just regular places too. Um, and so, yeah, so if it's not from the place, you know, you sh should either get rid of them or try to keep them alive in that jar for the rest of Yep. Until their natural existence. Yep. Um, and, I, and I think like, cause I've ordered a couple of things from like Carolina biological and stuff and, and they have like same instructions. Like I just got some flatworms recently and they're like, don't release these like ever. Well, I mean like a local, well, it's not even local. I think it's a U it's a whole U S maybe even international. Um, mm -hmm. New issue right now is Marimo moss balls. A lot of people, oh, Aquarius yeah. use them. Um, 
a lot of them have been found to have the invasive zebra mussel larvae mm-hmm. in them. And you can't really tell that. And so like, I mean, I got an, I had ordered some, I have a pet crayfish and he loves mm-hmm. to rip them apart. So I ordered them for him and I got an email from the distributor and they were like, you know, here's the instructions. There's invasive species. Make sure you dispose of this properly. You've been yeah. issued a refund, you know, like these are big issues. And yeah, you know, I understand wanting to keep things alive, but mm-hmm. to keep things alive and unique and endemic, you, you have to draw a line somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you get, you gotta be responsible for, for what you're picking up and especially what you're releasing into the wild. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So when I, when I go traveling to places, like I try to collect samples, like at the places that I'm at, so that way I can just dump it out right there. Otherwise, yeah. like, like I can bring them home, but then I have this jar and I'm like, well, like, yeah, like I actually, before this, I tidied up a little cause this mm. is like my messy mad scientist layer. That's, right? that's kind of how uh, it goes. Yeah, I know. And so like, I literally have like seven or eight samples, collected samples backed up. Uh-huh. And you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put household bleach in these. I'm mm-hmm. going to probably wait 30 minutes, check it, make sure it looks like it's bleached and it smells like chlorine. And mm-hmm. I'm going to dump it down the drain. Um, and that's usually how I dispose of my samples. Yeah. Or I just keep them alive in the jar until they, I also have a dump um, tank. I just dump all my samples into. (laughs) Okay. And that way I also have stuff to look at. It's actually a really cool um, experiment. Depending on what I dump in it, I get different things coming back. Yeah, yeah. So there you have it. I ended up talking with Jennifer a little bit longer, but this is pretty much the meat of the discussion that we had. And it was a lot of fun talking with her. Now, if any of you are in the microscope hobby or you have a microscope career and you want to be part of these interviews, go ahead and send me an email at fantastic.microbe at gmail.com. Uh, or if you know anybody else that might be interested in something like this, maybe give them a shout out and uh, point them towards me and we'll get these things set up. Uh, But yeah, it was a lot of fun and I hope to do more interviews like this. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you on our next Small Adventure Saturday.